What about the economics of it? Are you at break even? Uh, you know, from a cash flow perspective? Or? We're probably. You know, we always our our um, feasibility feasibility study said that we would probably um, show a loss for the first five or six years or so. We are now um, about three or four years into it, and next year we expect it to be uh, positive cash flow. Mm -hmm. So we're probably going to be ultimately a little bit. Uh, pretty close to where we had planned on being, or maybe a little bit ahead of the game. So, um, we're, we're we're not at the level of customers. We had some some blips early on uh, with some of the technology that we were buying, and um, but we but we so we don't we don't have the number of customers we thought we would have had today, this far into it. But we also are selling much more, um, many more services to them. So the dollar amount we're selling to the people is higher than we expected. So it's kind of offset each other. What about um, you know? Critics who might uh, be concerned about, you know, uh, municipal or public entities competing with private entities. How do you address those? Yeah, and, uh, and I'm a Republican, okay. and so uh, <laughs> that comes that comes up a little bit. And uh, there's two things I will say to it. I begged the private companies, and I don't even call them private. I call them quasi-private mm -hmm. in some of them because they get so many tax, um, uh, you know, uh, benefits. But um, I begged them to do it. I said. I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, I would rather you do it. And they said, no, we're not going to do it. And I asked them to please just get out of our way and let us do it. Um, the other piece, as a Republican, as an American, we put it to a vote of our people. And it, the people of my town, and we're the ninth most conservative city in America, the vote was 62% in favor of, 38% wow. against. That's a landslide in any kind of an election. And uh, so when, it come, when, you start want, want, when people want to start throwing in labels and, and politics into it, uh, I don't see how anybody argues with the vote of the people. Because we as Americans, whether we're Democrat or Republican or anywhere in between, um, um, we should all be supportive of what the a vote of the people. And mm -hmm. so um, the other thing is, for me, you know, even if I had a little bit of heartburn from the standpoint of getting into the television and telephone business uh, in order to get the internet. Today, we know we're in a pretty much of an anti-tax sort of uh, mentality in America. You know, there's a real resistance to, to, sure. for paying for things. And um, this is probably one of the most entrepreneurial um, projects that, has, that government can do because we didn't base it on taxes, we didn't get grants, we simply went and borrowed money, and it's all based on ratepayers. Mm -hmm. And so, um, there's no risk to my community from that standpoint. There's, um, um, and, and, and for me, as I was starting to say, it wasn't about delivering the telephone and television, but that sort of is the toll mm -hmm. for paying the, for the infrastructure up and down every single street in Lafayette. So ultimately, while we had to use the consumer services to pay for the infrastructure, for me it's all about economic development. It yeah. was always about giving our community a little bit of an upper hand, something that we're, as we're competing with other cities, other states, and other countries around the world, um, as, as people look for a place to locate those businesses that can locate anywhere, uh, we know we have good food, mm -hmm. we know we have a great culture, we have a very low crime rate where we're at, and um, the weather's pretty good, and, um, and now we have something to offer that is hard to find in most places in the world. It sounds like really, you know, the broadband infrastructure is the thing you wanted because it spurs the economic development. But as you point out, the kind of the consumer things, the video, the telephony, end up becoming important parts of a bundle. It is, it is as I said, it is the toll that paid for the infrastructure. Without that toll, without us having the consumer side of things, we could have continued to run you know, fiber uh, from our utilities department to a, a wholesaler who might bring it to a hospital or something like that. But in order to get it up and down every street to where it's available for small businesses, mm -hmm. home-based businesses, sure. large businesses, and consumers, that consumer component had to be there. You know, different cities have different things to offer. Lafayette doesn't have beautiful snow-peaked mountains. <laughs> we don't have a beautiful lake. Um, you know, we have a great, as I said, great culture. We're, we're located in a great spot in Louisiana from, the, from an oil and gas industry standpoint. We're, we're sort of higher than the rest of our area of the state. So for the, from the standpoint of people fearing hurricanes and things like that, that's not really a big issue for us where we're at, even though we're still in South Louisiana. Um, we're far enough away from the water. We've never had serious hurricane winds in Lafayette, and, um, and we can never flood like you saw in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but we, so well, while we didn't have those natural sort of assets that might make us, you know, a, a port city, for example, sure. we, can't, we can't be that, we did have that man-made asset. We have a utility company that, was, that the people voted on in 1896. Wow. 
and been a very reliable, in fact, the most reliable utility company in the state of Louisiana, according to the Public Service Commission. So we had an opportunity, a unique opportunity, to uh, in, the, in a city our size to bring broadband of the type that we were able to bring. Um, and I know that not every city has that opportunity and that ability, but this was, this was something we had. And like so many states, Louisiana's greatest export has been our young people. Mm -hmm. And so as a private sector retailer, before I ever ran for office before in my life uh, in 2003, I knew we had to do something out of the box if we were going to keep our young people. And, and so when people ask me why I ran for office, I said, I want my, I want my children to stay home. And, uh, and I was tired of the politicians talking a lot and not really doing anything. Um, this was our opportunity to do something to give Lafayette that competitive edge. Well, Joey, I really appreciate your time. And, All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you.